Hey guys, today I want to talk to you a little bit about Ruby and more so on JavaScript and why I find it so fascinating. But for, uh, a lot of boot camps started with Ruby and then transitioned to JavaScript. We're going to talk a little bit about why and uh, just a little JavaScript uh, eccentric talk today. So as I mentioned, um, there, there, when bootcamp started, um, Ruby on Rails was the number one thing taught back in like 2008, 2010, and um, it was the, as this guy puts, uh, the king, and it really was the king for quite some time, right? You can take a look here. Um, this is a um, an interest over time chart, and you can see Ruby in 2007 was at the peak of its interest, but still basically tenfold. Uh, tenfold in terms of the Google trends uh, of JavaScript and even Django at that time. And then as time has progressed, the increase of interest in Ruby on Rails decreased while JavaScript has continued sliding up. Now, why, why might that be? Well, in a practical standpoint, you'll see that JavaScript is much faster in terms of the benchmark runtime in comparison to Ruby. Ruby is, you know, I mean, you, you see the chart. Chart doesn't lie, right? Uh, in terms of job trends, you see that Ruby on Rails, although not as dramatic, has been going down since 2012, while JavaScript has just been climbing and climbing and climbing. And there, there's a couple of reasons for that, and that's one of the things that we're going to be talking about. And this 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 article goes over the pros and the cons of Ruby, the pros and the cons of uh, specifically Node, and you know companies that use Node every day. Almost everyone. Um, you seem to use Node uh, for something um, nowadays, even if it's just the you know the, the package manager and downloading uh, applications. But one of the cool things about JavaScript and why I think it's growing as a language is that I don't think there's anything because of how connected our world is via the internet and the way that applications are being built. I don't think there is like a final frontier for uh, JavaScript. I I'm of the belief that no matter what happens with Java, JavaScript, and um, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about what I'm basing this off of, that just augmented reality, virtual reality, um, blockchain, like I really just think AI, I, I just think that JavaScript's going to, if it hasn't already, jump into every single one of those directions. So, at, at, and I'm basing that off a few things. One, in terms of the interest of developers being interested, uh, there's a, a big, um, if, and if, if you're not familiar with some of the, the higher languages like Java, C Sharp, maybe Scala, uh, stuff that's a little bit more object oriented and has things like classes, uh, you, may, you may not even notice that if you're just a, a pure web developer and you've been touching JavaScript and you haven't got onto TypeScript yet. But some of these functionalities uh, JavaScript didn't have, have really until recently, or it's kind of a pain to do. Some things they didn't have, and some things were kind of pain to do. So uh, with the with the advent of of uh, TypeScript, you now have not only the ability to create classes and assign types, uh, uh, which makes your your code much more strict, which results in less bugs. It does kind of take away a little bit of the cool factor of changing a string to a uh, to a uh, int. Or a number, and you know, I'm not gonna lie. I said, "Baby," I said to my girlfriend. I said, "Look, I'm gonna turn this string into a number. You're impressed. You're impressed." No, uh, so, um, but uh, it does take away some of that that sort of you know wonky stuff that you take that you think is fun. But it does. It did, uh, all in all, it has attracted more of the uh, traditional developers. I would say the people who maybe are computer science grads. So that is more of their thing. Has made it say, okay. Maybe JavaScript's not as bad, and it's attracted people that way. It also just seems to be implementing in every direction. And I think Node is a perfect example of that. For a long time, JavaScript was just this, this language where you made stuff on the internet do stuff. You, you know, you wanted to, it made stuff interactive. That's really JavaScript at the end of the day, is it made stuff interactive. And it does make stuff interactive. And then Node came along and changed the game, right? Node came along and said, look, JavaScript ain't for the front end. That's some bullshit. We're doing back end stuff. And now you have uh, you know, JSON type databases like MongoDB. And so you have JavaScript databases basically. You have JavaScript back end. You have JavaScript front end. 
And now, uh, from that, as as people start kind of expanding their mind, is apply, are applying JavaScript in every direction. You now have JavaScript applications for your phone. You know, React Native, Ionic. Um, you know, JavaScript desktop applications. You can virtual reality JavaScript. And um, and I, I don't know this to be true, but I bet a JavaScript blockchain is around the corner if it doesn't exist already, right? So so. Um, my, my point being is I don't think there's an end to where JavaScript will go. I think it's going to be uh, one of those languages that due to its flexibility is allowed, to, its its core flexibility is going to continue to, and how connected our world is, right? Nowadays we live in a world in which everything's connected to the internet. And if all we need to do is make an iframe or like a little insert and make an app that's actually a web page look like an app, everything is all of a sudden accessible via JavaScript. And it's a very interesting world that we live in because uh, for a long time, for the last three, four years, there's been rapid, rapid, rapid change in the web development world. It's kind of slowing down, right? It's kind of slowing down. Um, you know, Vue.js is trying to change that up. Vue.js is trying to change it up, right? So, you know, for a long time, jQuery was, believe it or not, king. I know a lot of us like to talk smack on jQuery. jQuery, for its time, you know, it's time for you to uh, rest in peace. But hey, uh, you did your job. You did it valiantly. Angular JS, another great one. Now we're moving on to um, Angular Four, although you're just supposed to call it Angular. React, React Native, Redux, and all the various modules that are happening. And we're kind of changing the way that we think about building web applications using a more component architecture. Um, you know, model view control. Controller. Now we have build tools. Now we have um, you know all these great resources and assets that are growing. Version control. Uh, and I guess the point I'm trying to make um, is that I see JavaScript continuing this trend. Now I don't necessarily think that. I think there's been a lot of innovation that has happened. And something's good, something's bad, right? Even if you go to Bauer's website now, they say, hey, just use Webpack, right? So I think some things are fine. We've kind of had the first iteration of like change and like some things made it, some things got cut out. And we've learned from that in terms of the web development world. And that's always going to happen, maybe not in such a frequent, frequent amount. But I think it's a very interesting thing, JavaScript, because I, th- I, I honestly believe that it's going to be one of those languages that is not going to be limited to anything anymore. There's going to be a framework and a library that is just going to let you do whatever you want with it. And I don't even know what that means to a degree because it's it's hard to say, okay, well, you know, I wouldn't even know how how you'd make a JavaScript blockchain. Does it, do I think it can't exist? I don't think it can't exist. I don't know if it's a good idea, but I don't think it can't <laughs> exist because uh, I don't know anything about blockchain on a, on a technical aspect. But in terms of, you know, we're doing VR in JavaScript, right? And I'm sure augmented reality as well, uh, game development, everything can be done with it. And it's hard to say, see what's next, but I imagine that JavaScript's ready to do that too. And so it's a great language to learn for that reason because you know, five, ten years ago, if you said you wanted to be, you didn't know what you wanted to go into. You said, you know what, I know I want to be some sort of developer. I don't know if I want to be a web developer. I don't know if I want to be a mobile developer. I don't know if I want to be a VR developer, augmented reality developer, a back-end developer, a front-end developer, a database. You now have a language that can do it all. And for me, at least, I think is a one of the because of the flexibility and how basic it kind of starts out. Now, it could be very overwhelming because there is so much flexibility and there are so many tools and there are so many libraries and frameworks. And it may take you a while to sort of ramp up to where you feel comfortable sort of jumping in between, right? Um, you know, you might start with JavaScript, then move to jQuery, then move to AngularJS, then move to Angular, then move to React and Redux and React Native and Ionic, right? It, so I understand that that can all be very overwhelming but at the same time it is very powerful and very fun like 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 i'm pretty excited by the state of javascript and i'm very happy that you have boot camps that are teaching that over ruby on rails because i've i've uh, i've heard some horror stories from developers who have gone to boot camps i'm very pro boot camp i've been sponsored by boot camps in the past and 
Um, one of the things that I've that my personal opinion for the people that I've seen, like when I was researching about people who'd had negative experiences on YouTube, almost all of them were Ruby jobs, and not that you can't get a Ruby on Rails job. I think it. I think it's just one of those things that there's already developers for those jobs, and so you're gonna have a little bit harder time when, and you have a lot of a lot of these startups or large companies that are building out their software team a little bit more. They're transitioning to Node or JavaScript and things like that. Um, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, I'm just excited at the state of JavaScript. I think it's very exciting. Um, I wonder what your guys' favorite framework or library is, what you like about it. And I, I think that if we were to look at the trends of what people actually code in their free time uh, and on like GitHub or something, I think you would see that there's a lot of web development projects and there's a lot of JavaScript projects in general uh, when, when putting that stuff out there. And because it is, we are so connected to the web nowadays, right? Everything connected to the internet. You have smart refrigerators. Hell, I might get an oil, essential oil diffuser that's a smart one pretty soon. You never know, right? Like there, there's a smart everything connected to the web, and that that goes hand in hand with JavaScript because uh, that's where it gets it. That's its origin story, right? That's if this was a superhero movie, we would start with the web. You know, that's that's what I'm trying to say. Um, so. Anyhow, guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. I'll include a link to this as well. Uh, I think it's a pretty good and well-written article. So uh, I hope you uh, enjoyed the video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up, share the video, like the video. I think I already said like the video. Uh, support me on Patreon and join the Facebook group. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Hey, guys, thanks for watching the video. If you happen to be looking for a boot camp, I couldn't recommend Dev Mountain any higher they also include housing with their tuition so you can get up and go and get started right away thanks again for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video bye